Welcome back to the Maratha Confederacy Abridged. In the previous part, we were fighting the Mughals for Corsica for some reason, and we won. Then we spent most of the episode fighting against the Russian invasion of Brandenburg. Had some sort of edgy battles where I didn't do particularly good tactics, but we won in the end. So now we're going to want to think about invading Russia ourselves. We rejoined things one turn after the end of the last part, and a couple of things have changed. One thing is that the Mughal Empire have landed a force here in Britain. They were previously sitting around besieging our ports or blockading our ports. So I've already started making troops here, but we only have a few. So now, in reaction to this, we'll just rapidly try to recruit something else. We don't have very good recruitment buildings here, but we can spam out some stuff and hopefully we'll be able to deal with them without them conquering all of our recruitment centers. So eventually things will look better. And I could also enhance our defences by shipping in some trash. I have a half stack of trash from Amsterdam here, who in a single turn I can move to Edinburgh using our ports. So with that, it just means if they attack the forts, the forts will at least be packed with trash to operate the guns and be meat shields. The other thing that's changed is that the Russian invasion of Brandenburg isn't over. They landed some more troops, so we're actually still at it again. Here I started setting up to attack those guys. We're going to have a numerical advantage locally, so nothing too much to worry about. Looks like I got bored and actually didn't attack them, but we'll come back to that. Instead, I was more interested in moving out here at the Crimea. We can move up to that bridge into the Ukraine. The issue I had was I don't know whether Russia have armies back there in the fog of war, so I was feeling a bit cautious at first. Then I came back to that invading army and decided to order to resolve it. That goes okay. They don't die, so we'll have to fight them again, but they're not going to do any real damage. Here we are in the next turn. Send out some trash to attack them, doing some nice, safe auto resolves. We take them down. We take enormous casualties as well, but most of those casualties were just trash. Hashtag trash lives don't matter, so that's all fine. Now these armies can eventually move out to join our invasion of Russia, which is already underway. I've got some troops up there near Riga that you can see in the background, and I've got an army currently en route to Kiev, and as it happens, it can attack Kiev right now. Plus, there's not much inside, so I thought let's go for it. The balance bar's pretty far in our favour. They do have forts, but we have tons of artillery in this army, so we're looking good. Figured we could just do an auto-resolve here, but actually we lose the auto-resolve, we get annihilated, and that's why we make the auto-resolve safety save. So we're going to go back and do that one manually instead. Figured I'd do the rest of my stuff for the turn first. One thing I wanted to do was take the army that was marching up from the Crimea and divert them east. There are some easy captures out here, including our enemy Dagestan also over there, so we might be able to settle that war. Here's the attack on Riga. First I go in with a wave of trash, that's just a distraction. Now all the guys inside the settlement can't take part in the real battle outside. Since they had their force split between two armies, we're just going to exploit that and all to resolve the guys outside. We lose a whole bunch of men there, hopefully a lot of those guys were trash from the reinforcement army. And that's that. We probably could fight and win this battle, there are no forts, but I couldn't be bothered. So we're just going to leave that place under siege for now and then jump back to the Ukraine attack where the enemy don't have very much and they have enough artillery that even though they have forts we can just pound the forts into submission if we do this manually. This isn't a completely free process because their fort guns can shoot at us. I could in theory try to get out of the way or take cover or send forward a sacrifice but I wasn't too worried about it. Figured we'd probably just destroy the fort walls before the guns did too much damage so just sort of sat around getting shot by them. Here we are a bit later, where the walls explode after we shoot them enough times. They're bagging some free kills as well, since they were manoeuvring on top of it. Good stuff, then I went and opened up another breach, and then I started moving up to get really close. My goal was to have the guns set up in canister shot range of the openings, and then just shoot canister shot inside, since their infantry tend to sit in the openings once they're there, so we could just gradually kill them for free and try to get a nice exploit victory or something like that. Looks like their cav tried to come out and then go back in, ended up fighting with them in the breach. We defeated most of them, then got out of the way, and then I went ahead with my plan. Here though, those enemy cav look like they're about to charge out and attack my guns. I quickly ordered the guns to load up that canister shot and get firing. 
figured we'd be able to hit them with a couple of volleys and because they're already damaged that would send them packing. As it happens, well, nothing happens. Basically, we fire at them with a canister shot and it all misses. I think it goes over their heads. Not quite sure what the deal with canister shot actually is. Maybe it has a certain range at which it works, even though you're allowed to fire it at different ranges. So not much happens. Luckily, the cows just walk off instead of charging the gun. So that's good. Some infantry come out, though, and it looks like my canister shot plan just isn't going to happen. There's me hesitating to give an attack order. I was about to give an order to have my men charge to attack those infantry, but because the charge would take them through my guns, that would kill my guns, so we can't do it. Luckily, I had some guys set up on the flank who make an attack instead. We killed their commander pretty much straight away, and throwing the elephants in there as well spooks everything and they start running away, leaving just a few units inside the fort. So I switched my guns to go back to round shot to get a few kills, and instead started trying to snipe the enemy away using my line of infantry here because by standing at a certain angle, we can make it so only the edges of enemy units can see us, but we can have a full two unit front seeing them, meaning it will be a long but constantly in our favor gun battle. We're always shooting them more than they're shooting us, and we'll just get a better than normal result. As that was going on, this happened. My general died because for some reason, my elephant ended up sitting in this breach here, just being shot in the face, and I completely did not notice that happening. So that was great. The upside to the general being dead is that now the elephants will just die at the end of the battle, so you might as well just use them to run in and attack the enemy in melee. This goes pretty well actually, and we start smashing through those infantry. I'm also now gonna get all of the cav and just run on him. Since the enemy are basically dead, it doesn't take much more to finish them off. Here is the eventual result, a far cry from what the auto resolve gave us, but with that embarrassing general loss tacked on just for fun, a nice punishment perhaps. So that's good. Now the road to Moscow is open, and that's what I'm thinking about right away. I grab this spy and take a look. A couple of units are on the road. We need to see whether they have another army back there, basically. We also need to hang out at Kiev for a little bit for public order reasons. And as for the dead general, we can just promote some guy to general and promote the horses to elephants, and we're back in the game. Now we're going to do something a bit different. I've got my new shiny fleet with a bunch of decent ships, and I thought let's actually use it for something. The Russians have several of my ports under blockade, so I figured let's go and actually clear some of these out. I ought to resolve this small enemy group, and it said I lost three ships, and I was just like, no, we didn't. Like, our fleet's so much more powerful than theirs that this is definitely not one where we take losses. So, again, I'm forced to do this one manually with a massive balance bar advantage. So we're going to take a little look at a naval battle. We're looking at it in uh, the maximum speed because these things are very slow. My strategy here is to make this little S shape. What we want to do is have that first turn allow us to be firing broadsides at the enemy. Then the second turn takes us in to kind of cross the T in both directions so that our broadsides can fire both right and left at the two parts of the split enemy fleet since the crews on either side of the ship are kind of independent so if you're not firing out of one side of the ship there's no extra reload speed for the side that is firing or anything like that so to make best use of all your guns you kind of need to be in the middle of the enemy shooting in all directions and that's the plan once we've crossed them we curve around to start surrounding that front group allowing us to shoot at them from three sides the back group is now going to collide with our line pretty much, but I don't think there's any kind of ramming or collision damage in the game, so they just sort of stop and try to maneuver here. The nice thing about this is we're going to shoot them at point blank range, which is super accurate, whereas all our shots going up against this front group are going to be mostly missing. You can see them landing in the sea all over the place. But yes, this back group we're going to be in trouble now, especially this brig, which sails right into the broad side of a third rate, just eats it in the face, and they immediately surrender. I'm sure the other broadside was firing at the other ship because they also surrender. And that's that, now half their fleet is out of action, and we're going to completely surround the other half and just bombard them with so many guns from so many directions that will probably win. Although that said, with the inaccuracy thing that I mentioned, we're going to be hitting them very infrequently, so this is going to take a while. So here we are, a while later. They're taking an absolute pounding with explosions all over the place, taking out their masts like this, 
gives them a morale debuff, so they're more likely to surrender. Plus, presumably, it stops them from moving, but as it happens, they're just sort of sitting there being surrounded, so that's good. The wind isn't very strong, and these big ships can become almost immobilized if they're not sailing with the wind. And that is, of course, helping us out immensely, because this current setup benefits us quite well. So we blast away at them, making note of the fact that the naval battles in this game are actually pretty good and are very well done, they just don't matter very much in general. They could probably just make a game about these naval battles if they really tried. But anyway, one ship sinks after surrendering, which is annoying because if they surrender and are still floating, you get them at the end of the battle. The other ship, for some reason, still hasn't routed or anything, they just try and plow into our line, but we're going to cut to the chase. They eventually take a whole bunch of damage and also surrender. So here we are, we did take down their fleet, this time without losing multiple ships, and I think we gained at least one in surrendered ships as well. There's actually another Russian fleet I could take on just next to that one, but the other Russian fleet's kind of more serious, and I'm not really here to actually take damage and lose ships, because they're expensive and annoying to replace. For me, it's better to just lose the money on the trade being blockaded and make it back by raiding everyone else's trade routes by using the ships for privateering, so we just do that instead. On to the next turn now, my army moving east keeps moving east, on the way there's this small Russian town. They dare to resist and I dare to make an unsafe order resolve with no save and it actually goes okay, so that was good. And then Degistan is next down the road, so I thought, let's go after them. I was about to destroy the local church, but then I had an epiphany. The public order bonus you get from having a church while your population is the non-state religion is the same as the penalty you get from having a population being the non-state religion. So that means if we actually don't even try to convert the local population, they'll be somewhat happy with that arrangement meaning we can now be newly enlightened when it comes to religious tolerance and just let them not be Hindu, which is pretty much what I've been doing in most places because converting people to Hinduism is a bit of a drag. I've recruited some units around Amsterdam and I can ship them over to be near London because now we can start to form a serious army here. The Mughal army, by the way, basically just ran around destroying everything. You can see a lot of burning settlements in England at the moment. So they've just destroyed a load of stuff, I'm not going to bother repairing it until everything is sorted. Looks like it'll just stop burning for a second there for some reason, <laughs> good old glitches, but anyway, we've now formed an army that will respond at some point. The army at Kiev moves up to just sit in this town near Moscow. Still no sign of the enemy, and a bit of spying reveals there's not that much up the road around Moscow itself. So if they don't reinforce, we'll have a chance to move on in. I also learned that Moscow is super rich, it's making absolutely tons of money right now, so we need to cut that jugular for the Russians as soon as possible. Here's me moving to trap the Mughal army in Cornwall, they were going after the farms, so now they can't get past me without a possible interception battle, so we've got that situation contained. Public order's becoming worse and worse across Europe, and I'm having to recruit more and more trash to keep places under control. It's really just places that have universities, because universities give you this clamour for reform, and we've researched various things like human rights, and people are basically starting to learn that maybe their lives would be better if I wasn't constantly forcing them to breed horses and elephants and throwing people into meat grinders for no particular reason, really just doing this because I can. So yeah, they want things to be different, and we need to shut them up. Here we are moving to Dagestan, it's not heavily defended, but there are forts, so we're not going to make an attack, I'll just leave them under siege. And here I am making the infamous original pro-gamer move, the Winter March on Moscow, and it seems to go okay. I'm not going to attack right now, because they have forts and stuff, but we'll leave them under siege, see if they sally, and we've got reinforcements on the way, so that's looking good for now. In the Russia turn, we do see a sally, but it's back over at Riga, the Forgotten Siege. For some reason, it looks like I was doing something fancy. I've got one unit of trash besieging the town. Maybe I was thinking of moving out to attack that army in the background. But basically, we have everything involved here. We just have a lot of our stuff in reinforcement army, so we can't deploy them at first and need to wait around to get that set up. Annoyingly, it's not like in some of the other Total War games where your first reinforcement army is all of your first set of reinforcements. So here, 
While our trash stack is the second reinforcement army, it comes on at the same time as the first one, meaning some of our unit slots are going to get used up by this trash coming onto the field, although I can just withdraw them. At first though, they're going to eat the usual early battle cavalry charge, so it goes right through them. What these cavalry find though, is we've got a sort of quicksand of trash thing going on because more trash keeps appearing behind the guys they just charged through, and then they find themselves completely surrounded and isolated, and we actually do eventually defeat those cav just with enormous casualties of course. Meanwhile they've also got a couple of units of infantry who appear to be charging out towards the one unit of, of trash I originally deployed. They're even charging in big, big blocks Napoleon style and they get flank attacks by my cav so they don't make it in and these cav attacks are successful we don't have a square and unlike some of the recent battles we've seen against russia they don't resist my cav charges they're willing to die perhaps because they don't have a commander the presence of these elephants is probably spooking them as well they do send out a mortar crew to negotiate and we slaughter them quite quickly so that goes well just the usual stuff and then i'm going to move my big wing of cav up towards their fort the enemy were gradually forming up just outside the walls but they were taking their time about it so i just kind of went in and made this attack i think i was inspired by attempting to stop their mounted cossacks from shooting at my stuff and a brawl just kind of begins here as i commit more and more stuff into the fray getting some nice juicy flank attacks it occurred to me it's kind of been a long time in this episode since we saw massive death balls of cav just charging wildly around, so to make sure you know you're watching the Murata Confederacy campaign abridged, here it is finally happening. We kill their commander pretty early on, that's a good sign, and you can see stuff routing all over the place, looks like the elephants are getting in on the action as well. So yes, this isn't going to be another disastrous charging into the enemy and hoping they die plan, it's going to be the more common working version of charging into the enemy and hoping they die because we charge into them and they do die mainly while trying to get away looks like these cossacks are having a bad day as we just annihilate them on our way to rear attack the stuff that hasn't routed already they then do route the battle went on because they had more units still coming out of the fort but basically they ended up getting swamped didn't go very well here's the result we won and we can probably win against what's left once we attack in our turn but we're going to move right on to another battle now because the Mughal Empire stack that we trapped in Cornwall does try to move and we get this interception battle and this one's going to be more serious because they have various quite decent units and loads of experience as well. It was a super rainy day which probably gives us an advantage since it does something to the rate of fire of guns and we're all melee stuff. But the main effect it has is it's just hard to see what's going on. The fight starts with the enemy's general on his elephants charging forwards. Didn't have a particularly good way to deal with this, so I just kind of ran the cav into them. The charge doesn't do anything, but the unit routes, and now we can take them down nice and easy, and that does allow us to get that early general kill, making the rest of the battle easier. From here, I just kind of plowed on forwards because more stuff was coming up. There were some horse archers that came out to shoot at us, so charged into them, and then more and more stuff started coming over from behind them, and things are just gonna get started in the center, really, in a big blobbish fashion. And actually, it didn't go that well. They do have a load of camels in here, and they have artillery shooting into the fight. My artillery might also be shooting into the fight at this stage, not quite sure. So that central battle was really just a blob with not much charging going on. But on the right and left, things are a bit more uh, usual. We charge into the enemy's infantry lines. Their musketeers, the green unit I forget the name of, has quite high melee stats, so they don't really die when you charge into them, but their militia units certainly will. Back in the center, things are starting to go wrong, actually, because the pounding from the artillery ends up routing a big blob, and we actually, for the first time, I think, lose a fight with one of our death balls without me voluntarily withdrawing so bad news over here looks like we're being bogged down they've got melee troops and camels fighting our lances and while i think we do have stats on our side those fights are just grinding on and not allowing us to move on as quickly as i would like and we could use the reinforcements similar situation here on the left really then we saw something a little bit special they have some kind of experimental advanced ammunition type on their mortars i think 
and they can set the ground on fire. As it happens, they didn't really fire it at anything, so that doesn't achieve anything, but it was nice. Then my cav sweep in and attack the artillery positions, so no more of that, they're not actually going to inflict massive damage with those special ammunition types, we should get some of those at some point. The enemy's camels run through the fire, I'm guessing it doesn't do damage, maybe it just doesn't do friendly fire damage, who knows. Basically now we've won the flanks after a bit of grinding and running around, and we had to fold in to deal with the centre, and we're not going to do that in a particularly sophisticated way, we're kind of just going to plough in. With their general already dead, we don't need to do anything too fancy, but actually the reason behind me being so brazen was just because from a high up camera perspective, in heavy rain, you can't really tell what's going on at all, so I was just kind of clicking on faintly visible flags and moving them around. But down on the ground you can see it's a grind where things aren't actually very good, but our morale advantage will allow us to win because the enemy just start to leave as we overwhelm them. Once their trash gets out of the way we can rear attack and flank attack the better stuff these musketeers, they eventually go and all of a sudden this is going to turn into a slaughter as our surviving cav rally forwards and get going. By the end of all this, we've pretty much dealt with the invasion of Britain. We did take moderate casualties, but this is one of the cases where it doesn't matter because this army only exists to defeat that enemy army and now it's probably going to achieve that. Now a couple of scrappy things to finish the episode that happened just after this. One thing was that I bothered to check out the minister system on someone's recommendation and I moved people around and was able to get slightly higher global public order so that's going to help out with people realising they have rights. We got a notice there saying that our national leader has died, so that might be affecting public order. That minus one to happiness for lower classes isn't too helpful on the harsh reputation. Still looking very good at 70, so she is our new queen and we are forced to stan. The only other thing to mention is I discovered at this point that we've actually unlocked a new unit type, only available in places that have a really high level recruitment building. It's the Sipahi, it's like an Ottoman Empire style unit, and they're actually really good. They're better than our Barkia Lancers, and they cost less to recruit, and they have lower upkeep for the same unit size. So basically, at this stage, we want to replace everything with Sipahis and just have that instead of our two kinds of Lancers. They have the same charge bonus, or just about the same charge bonus, but their overall stats are much better. They're like a really elite melee unit, but they're also a cav unit with great charging stats. So that seems like the way to guarantee we take over the world. I'm pretty sure we're going to take over the world without them, but we'll try to deploy a few of those guys. And the final thing to mention for this part is we did go and clear up the situation with the Riga siege, just auto-resolving what was left and killing a few survivors hanging out in the area. With that, these armies will now go towards St. Petersburg to complement our ongoing march towards Moscow. So join me in the next part when we'll have the second half of our attack on Russia where we're going to hit these serious targets and hopefully finish things off. But perhaps even more importantly, we're going to go for the center of the world Illuminati, Dagestan.